guy is a um, chartist, and um, he says that um, I disapprove of chartist and technical analysis, and he's a professional doing technical analysis work. And um, what I say, said was that you can't use waves charts and um, and cycles in a market that's rigged on a short-term basis. So what I say is someone's got to prove to me that the manipulation does not affect that market or the markets in different stocks or whatever. And um, I know you were generally speaking about Robert Prechter and Harry Dent, who are deflationists, when you comment on those who have been wrong. Well, there's a lot more of them that have been wrong than those two. Uh, for the past five and a half years, none of them have been right that I know of. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong people, but, uh, you know, I'm talking about maybe 30 or 40 people. And he talks about the other legends of Wall Street, James Dimes, uh, and he asked about what I think of their letters. I think James Dine's got a good letter. Uh, Jimmy's a nice guy, and I know him. Uh, I've known him over the years. I think he's very competent, and uh, he's made some great calls. His only downside is he doesn't know when to sell. Uh, the second one is Jim Sinclair, and he asks why he changed his name. And uh, I don't know. His um, family name is Schlegman. Uh, and uh, Schlegman used to be a big stock operator with Jesse Livermore way back when. Uh, it says that Richard Russell is pro-gold. Well, he is now. He's never been pro-gold in the, I don't know, 50 years that I've known his publication. I met him a number of times. I used to live about three streets away from him, but never went over to see him in La Jolla because I didn't think we had anything in common. And uh, I quite frankly don't know how his letter has done as well as it has over the years. Uh, Robert Frecht is a, uh, the Elliott Wave is a disaster. Uh, Mark Farber has done fairly well. I don't know him, but I followed him on the Barron's round table for a number of years. He's done pretty good. And Gerald Salenti has, has as well. But Gerald has no training in the market, and all the others do. And uh, he should really do trends and not get in to projecting where gold and silver or some stock or some bond is going to go because he's not professionally trained there. And he asked me what newsletters I read, and I, my answer is very few. I don't have time. And um, um, he asked my opinion on others. There's five of them here. Uh, Peter Schiff. Um, um, Peter has uh, had some pretty stiff losses in foreign stocks. And how do I know that? Because people send their portfolios to me. And he was never really pro-gold, and now he sells gold and recommends a handful of gold silver stocks. Uh, Eric Sprott, um, the only thing I know about him, other than he owns a firm and he's very pro-gold and silver, is when silver was $50, he has a silver fund. And um, he sold his whole 
interest in the fund at fifty dollars. And of course didn't tell anybody. And that was reported by the Globe and Mail out of Toronto. And when asked why, he said, well, I wanted to switch to stocks. But, you know, you really can't do those things ethically when you're a principal in an operation such as he has with funds. And incidentally, getting back to Sinclair, Barron's carried a piece on him uh, maybe three years ago and said that he had sold a substantial amount of shares in the company that he guides. It's called Tanzanian something or other. At eight dollars a share, and it dropped down to around three. And I think people were disturbed that he didn't reveal that he had been a seller. Uh, Jim Ricketts is a quandary. He came from nowhere. Uh, he's connected with the CFR people big time. And uh, I question uh, the possibility that he's a disinformation agent. I think that's possible. Uh, James Turk's a very nice man, very bright. I know him. And um, if you want to put money uh, in the in uh, Jersey or Guernsey or Hong Kong or someplace like that. He does that. And Jimmy Rogers, uh, when uh, you are uh, the, the partner of George Soros, you have to be part of the Illuminati. You can't otherwise. And I went to conferences as a speaker from 1975 to 1990. And uh, he was never pro-gold or pro-silver. And he used to go to great lengths to avoid me. Um, he asked about Rick Santelli being the only one on CNBC telling it like it is, and he's right. And Aaron Burnett left and went to CNN. And I'm only guessing. I Maybe the opportunity was great for her. And maybe that's what she really wanted to do. I don't know. But I, don't, I think she was very uncomfortable working with those people there, except Mark, whatever his name is, who died, and they won't tell us how he died, which tells me he suicided himself. And if they want to challenge that, let them tell me what happened. And uh, they got along very well. And they liked each other. But at CNBC, you, you do the Illuminati party line, or they make life difficult for you. But she was very smart, and uh, she did a good job.